Hello everyone, my name is Nils, environment artist at Sierra Division, and welcome back to the next chapter. So now let's go over some quirks of the transition between cat data and polygons. The first thing that I usually like to do is select everything. In this case, I'm just going to select one for easier purposes so you can see it. And in Blender, I would weld by distance. In Max, I would just select everything and open the weld menu. So let's zoom in on a part. Let's reset this. And what you'll have a lot in um, any CAD conversion, especially in Moi, is you'll have a lot of floating vertices or vertices that are very close to each other. In this case, this one is very close to each other. So what I do is select all the vertices on my model and then weld them by a very small distance. I usually go up to 0.02 centimeters and then it welds it nicely, as you can see here. You could see before there were 2.3K, now there's like 2.2K. So let's press OK, and it shouldn't have welded and done a little bit of work for us already. Another few features, I wouldn't call them really features, quirks of the conversion is that sometimes the edge loops are pretty weirdly spaced out. So right here there's a very thin edge and then it stops suddenly. So what you'll have a lot on curved surfaces or cylindrical items is that the connection is pretty weird. So it would be fine here for a couple of them and then it would just connect very weirdly. So if you really want to fix that, if, for example, if you want to make LODs, um, this could cause some issues and would require a lot of cleanup work to go between LODs. So what I like to do for cleanup is I would select all these faces, which I'm going to do right now like so then you can just delete them now this is a separate object then you can just detach it because we'll delete it anyways and to have a cleaner transition um, to avoid stuff like this you can just scale it down extrude scale it down um, until where you want it so in real you would like clean this up and align it just a little bit and then snap it to this and then you can just delete the other object that you have, this one right here, the one we detached, delete it, and cap the edge. And then connect all the vertices. And of course, you're going to have some um, normal issues right here, um, but you can fix it with weighted normals. So it's a little bit cleaner now compared to stuff like this, and it will be easier for us to create LODs from. So after that you can just find some other problem areas on your model such as this part right here you can just do the same thing that we've done on this part then you can go around and check for stuff like this because this will cause issues when you add a weighted modifier it will cause some pinching so let me just show you real quick this is what it's causing those little pinches mainly because the um, edges are super close together so what you can do is you can just merge them together, all the ones that are pretty close. And you can do the same thing for here, of course. And if you want, you can select the edges and move it along the edge or slide it with the double G in Blender and make it a little bit more evenly distributed. Cool. When we redo the weighted normals, you can see the shading is pretty much fixed. Then you can go around and find some more issues such as this one and another long triangle. You generally want to avoid long triangles for shading. So what we do is merge this one together and that's fixed as well. Same goes for this one. Basically everything really close together will give some form of shading issues and you generally want to avoid that type of stuff. And then pretty much you would just go around your model, see what needs to be changed. You can edit some stuff, um, make it easier on yourself when you have to do um, level of detail. So, so just um, check around the model and uh, fix what needs to be fixed. So you pretty much do this for every single object in the scene. Just go around it and see what needs to be changed. Now imagine you've done everything and you're happy with how it looks. 
the next thing that I usually do is delete all the back faces for performance. So let's say you won't ever see the back face of this object right here. You would just select it and just delete the back face. There you go. Same goes for these lenses inside um, stuff you're never ever going to see. You can just delete them. This lens I deleted as well, just a back face, never going to be seen anyways. And you're going to do that for everything that's not going to be seen. All right, so once we've optimized everything that needed to be optimized, um, let's say you did some more optimizing than me, that's fine, but I'll just leave it as is for this tutorial. You can go ahead and create a new layer or group in Blender and you can rename it to low and then we can create another one and name it high because we'll be importing our high poly in the same um, file as this one maybe one thing to note on the low poly is that i've changed something here um, as you remember there used to be like a small inset just like this one but i removed it just for the sake of showing you that this will bake just fine. So I left one in and one out. So you can see the difference between um, geo in the low and no geo. So once we've done that, you can um, import the high poly. We called it model 88 high. This is just the same thing in Pi XYZ. Um, you just change the preset to very high or high, depending on your uh, model, of course. So we can open that one and import it just as is. And there you see it's pretty high poly, but it doesn't really matter. It's a high poly. So we can take a look around. We don't really have to change anything about this model. The only thing that we need to do, if you're using Max, it imports these empties. Um, I think it does the same thing in Blender as well. You can just delete them. So of course, now that we see here, we have 65 objects and on the low poly, we only have 23. So what we want to do is connect everything that needs to be connected. So for the main body, for example, we have all of this stuff as well as the um, screws and this part. So basically this would make up our main body as well with the screws and all of this stuff. So you would connect everything together into the main body. And then you do the same thing for, for example, the hinge is consists out of multiple small objects, just merge them all together in the high. The same for uh, these little knobs here, just merge them. So basically everything that's one object in your low poly needs to be one object inside of your high poly. For me, that's just the easiest way to tackle things and Marmoset will just create big groups according to your bodies anyways. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and I'll see you later when it's done. So let's say you find some parts in your high poly that aren't as smooth as you want it to, or fusion would just take too long to smooth it out. For example, this piece, you can just, if you have ZBrush, um, export it into ZBrush and then do a quick dyna mesh of, let's say 240 resolution with open circle. Then you can try to do this. You can go to the deformation tab and polish by features to get those big shapes out crisp edges, the circle close, you can do polish a little bit to get it more smoothened out. Then of course you would do more than that for it to get rid of these edges right here. And so basically you just have a little bit more smoother mesh, then you would just decimate it to a set poly count and export it as an FBX and re-import it again. And that way you have a faster, smoother mesh because in Fusion, that would take a little bit longer. All right, once we've connected everything that needs to be connected, so we have 23 objects for our high and then 23 for our low. So we know every object has its corresponding low and high. Now, one of the features or quirks of Fusion is that it names every body body and then a number. And it doesn't always correspond with each other. Let's take the main body, for example, and the high one as well. This one for the low is body 100 and the high is body 276. 
And you can either rename it manually, but I created a script, or rather ChatGPT created a script after many tries that does it for me. So basically what it does is check the dimensions of the object and the center of mass, and it checks for corresponding objects or bodies in both folders. Uh, the only thing we need to do is rename it to HP in capital case and LP for the low poly. There you go. And what it'll do is basically check both folders so we can quickly run it. So you see it's checking all the bodies and comparing everything together. It's not perfect. I still have to tweak it. So as you can see, it found quite a lot of corresponding bodies. And this one is called high low because probably an error in the code, but it still has underscore low and these have underscore high. And you can see for the underscore high, it skipped a few, but that's because the high polys don't always match in dimensions and center of mass. Um, but if you look at the high poly body, we can see this is 100 and 100 low. And the lenses, for example, 80 and 80, and then 115, that's something he didn't rename. Um, because probably the center of mass is different and another one is this one. So we cut it in half and this is 99 and 146. It didn't rename it because, well, it's kind of obvious this one is halved of that, so it won't really recognize it, even though there's a small margin on it. So you just want to go over the missing ones and then just rename it manually. But this is already quite a lot faster than having to do all of them manually. So once we've done that, the next obvious step would be to unwrap everything we have. I don't think this is a part where I need to go over 100%, so I'll just start unwrapping and come back when everything is unwrapped and just give some pointers what to watch out for when packing your model. So for example, if you want to put seams on cylindrical items, um, it's always best to place them out of sight, so the camera angle for this little knob here will probably be viewed from up top. So the most logical way to put the seams is at the bottom. Another thing to keep in mind if you want to create LODs, it's always best to keep your um, seams kind of on the same angle or line of the model. So not something like this. This would be pretty bad if you cut seams here because it wouldn't line up anymore when you want to create, create laws and you will run into a lot of issues. So the best way is just to keep your seams right here. Another thing to look out for is if you have these kind of um, surfaces, the circle ones, they take up quite a lot of space. So what you can do is also just cut them just like this, and then you can unwrap them into a straight line. All right, welcome back. Our asset now is fully unwrapped and we made some adjustments along the way to the model as well. Just small minor stuff like merging some words that weren't supposed to be there and some back faces that I missed in the process. Um, this back um, is made in Rhizom or Rhizom, however you pronounce it. You just have to make sure that your islands aren't in this dark part of the red and the distortion. Same for the dark blue. It's fine if you have some distortion, as you can see, there's a little bit of distortion going on here. But that's mainly because I straightened the islands. Um, and usually islands prefer to keep their original shape. But if you straighten them, that's just something you have to watch out for that it doesn't go all the way to the both extremes. I like to keep my islands as straight as possible, except for some stuff is just impossible to keep straight. Another thing you have to note is the textile density. This one has an extremely high textile density, so you could technically um, lower your map resolution, so the textile density would go down, but I like to bake in 4K anyways and scale it down in engine. The only thing that will change if you change the map res is your margin and your padding. So after you have your back, you can optimize it further manually. What I like to do sometimes is just, for example, rotate a certain island. I like to pick the textile density, so I see it here. So it's 14,525. So sometimes when you rotate it and you back it again, it might increase or decrease. In this case, it 
kind of decreased it. So you just have to play around with it. Also some islands, mm, not sure if there's any islands in this case that will be seen um, less, for example, on assets like uh, the bottom of a table or the bottom of a chair, for example. You can always scale those assets down or those islands down rather to have a little bit more textile density if you're struggling to reach your TD. The same goes for mirroring and stuff and overlaps so you can reach your TD. But in this case, we don't really have any issues reaching our textile density. After that, the straight islands, as I already said before, even stuff like that, I like to align them so it's everything is pretty straight. For stuff like this, you can't really avoid it. So that's just how the shape goes. For circular items, I like to keep them straight as well. Sometimes I keep them rounded like this one. It's all up to personal preference. Another thing to note is the direction of your UVs. It's especially important when you're making stuff that's made of wood, for example, wood grain, and you want to align it according to the UV layout. And then you have a UV that's like this, so that would be pretty fine. But if you suddenly rotate this island, it doesn't line up anymore. So your wood grain, you wouldn't be able to um, map it according to your UV. You would have to use triplanar. So just watch out for that. But in this case, for this asset, I don't think we will have an issue. So let me just give you an example of like how you can manually adjust it. So what I like to do, as I said before, is rotate some islands that I say maybe would be better if it's aligned horizontally. So. Right now it's 14,525. If you rotate this one and repack everything, it's gonna be 14,597. So that's already an increase in textile density just by rotating some islands. And after that, you can find some spaces like here, some empty spaces. Maybe you can try to manually move something. It's all up to you. So for example, if you have islands like this, where there's a lot of empty space here, I'll just straighten them and see how much difference it makes. So right now it's at 14,600 textile density. Of course, this is extremely large, so you wouldn't really have this in a real world, world scenario. But anyways, let's just straighten these ones out. Cool, so I straightened them all out, as you can see here. So we are at 14,600, and if we pack it again with just doing that, we already have a textile density of 14,783. This asset could easily fit on a way lower map resolution, maybe even a 512. And if we pack it again at 512, we can see we have a textile density of 1.8K, which is closer to the real world scenario that you would have anyways. But I'll just keep it at 4K. Cool. Once we saved our pack and we're happy with it, we can just apply the same material to the asset else if it has different colors from fusion it will see that as different material ids and we just want it to have one material so let's just apply it here name it whatever you want i call it m underscore model 88 then apply it to the low poly only you don't have to apply it to the high poly just the low poly is fine then you would export this acid once your naming is all correct as model 88 low and the high poly as model 88 high and in the next part we will be baking our asset